Ah, what a pleasant way to spend a summer day here in beautiful Humboldt County. Strolling along this quiet country road on Table Bluff, south of Humboldt Bay. But you know, over 150 years ago, this road was anything but quiet. In fact, for several decades ending in the late 1880s, this is said to have been the busiest wagon road in all of Humboldt County. These buildings that you see behind me are what remains of the once lively, bustling old west town of Table Bluff. And the reason it was so lively is because five major wagon roads converged right here. Now one thing you have to understand, in the 1800s, the main way goods and services were transported over land were by horse-drawn wagons. And any of those supply wagons that traveled between Humboldt Bay to the north or the Eel River Valley to the south would go right through this town of Table Bluff. And we're talking a lot of wagons on most days between 100 and 200 horse-drawn freight wagons would rumble right through here, often kicking up clouds of dust on warm, dry summer days like today. So when the wagon trains arrived here, they had just come off of a long, grueling ride uphill to this higher point on the bluff. Oh, and they were thirsty, hot, and tired. And this building that you see behind me, it's now a private residence, but it used to be a lively tavern and saloon where these tired drivers could stop in for a drink or a bite to eat while their horses rested. Later on, it became a hotel where they could even spend the night. And right next door to this old tavern saloon is another historic building. And right next door to the old saloon, tavern, hotel, we have the blacksmith shop. Now the wagons that arrive here just come up a long, rough, rutted dirt road and often they needed repairs. Well, this is where they could get them fixed. And also in this town of Table Bluff nearby, there was a post office, two schools, two churches, two stores, and even two cemeteries. And next, I'll be heading over to one of those cemeteries the Table Bluff Cemetery, which is only about a mile southeast of here on this road. And there I'll be meeting local authors, Barry Evans and Jerry Rohde. And they are going to take me to the graveside of the Perrault sisters, one of whom perished in tragic circumstances. And the older sister, Laura, who helped to found the Humboldt County Women's Save the Redwood League in 1919. So, I reckon I should invite you to join me as I amble down the road here to the Table Bluff Cemetery to meet up with Barry Evans and Jerry Rohde to learn a little bit more about this old west town of Table Bluff right here in Humboldt Outdoors. Table Bluff Cemetery dead ahead. <laughs> you know, there's one thing I want to clear up that can be a little bit confusing. Where we were is known as the old town of Table Bluff, which sits atop a geologic formation known as Table Bluff, which is a high ridge with a somewhat flat top. And that is a ridge that begins right at the edge of the ocean, just south of Humboldt Bay, extends about eight to 10 miles southeast all the way to some low hills near the Eel River Valley. Now in the 1800s, Table Bluff, the geologic formation, was a major impediment to travel between the Eel River Valley to the south and Humboldt Bay to the north. Wagon trains, they couldn't really easily go around the bluff, so they had to go over it. They had to go up these steep roads, cross over the bluff, and then drop down to the other side and all the wagon roads crossing over Table Bluff converged on the town of Table Bluff. Okay, so now a big game changer occurred in the early 1880s when a railroad tunnel was blasted right through Table Bluff. So now to transport goods, instead of having to go over the bluff, now they could go through the railroad tunnel. 
So about a year ago, Barry took me on a tour of the Lolita Tunnel. And while we were in the middle of the tunnel in the dark, Barry told me something astounding. And Ray, above us, right above us, about 250 feet, is Table Bluff Cemetery. And the Table Bluff Cemetery is where we are going right now. Yet yeah, another yeah, adventure! Yeah, yeah. Good to see you, buddy. Yeah, ever since you took me in that Lolita Tunnel adventure, I've been dying to go on another adventure with you, and here we are. <laughs> here we are, 250 feet above the Lolita Tunnel. You brought Jerry we along. We brought Jerry along. Jerry's book, Both Sides of the Bluff, really covers what we're going to be talking about. So this bluff was a significant impediment to travel north and south, east and west for the movement of goods and commerce. During, like, what time era? Well, from the first uh, start of white occupation up here in 1850 until 1884 when they put a tunnel under the bluff, you had to go over the bluff for almost any type of travel. And you got to remember that this bluff is like a wall between the two most active, most viable parts of Humboldt County. Up to the north, you had Humboldt Bay ports at Fields Landing and up at Eureka. And over on the south side of the bluff, you had the Eel River Valley, which was this fertile agricultural area where in the early days, potatoes were grown. Eventually they did dairying there. They had apple orchards, fruit orchards. And so the breadbasket for Humboldt County, or the main part of the county, was over here on the south side. The hungry mouths that need to eat all this stuff was on the north side around Humboldt Bay. And so you had to have some kind of connection between those two areas. And everything converged yeah. at the what became the town of Table Bluff. Yeah. So Table Bluff, with all of this activity, was probably the most active, lively place in Humboldt County. And they had between 100 and 200 wagons and stages really? coming across every day. It was really, really steep for these teams to try to make it up the top. And they could spend like half a day, and by the time they got to the top of the bluff, the horses were tired, the drivers were tired, they needed to stop and rest. Fortunately for us, and for preserving the history, you can go there and see two of the physical pillars of that community. You can see the Old Table Bluff Hotel, and right next to it you can see the blacksmith, and those were the probably the two most important buildings in town because the horses you know needed repair for their shoes and things like that at the blacksmith shop and meanwhile at the hotel uh, there was also the saloon so even if you're going to stay overnight you could stop and have a drink and you can imagine what it's like spending six hours coming up from the eel river behind a dozen other wagons and the dust and the heat yeah yeah, yeah I'd, I'd want more than one drink so Jerry, this wasn't always Table Bluff, this was Ralawaka. Yeah, there, were, uh, there was a system of trails that went all the way through Weot territory, and when the first white explorers came through, the Weots helped guide them along those trails. A lot of the Indians here were killed or sent to reservations, and the whites just came in and took over everything. The Weots were left without any land at all. They had to come back and actually buy property if they wanted to have yeah. a place to live. So we're on what is traditionally we are ground. Well, this is a especially interesting situation up on Table Bluff because you had two cemeteries in a very small community. Mm -hmm. They were about a mile apart. And over to the west of where we are now was the Catholic Cemetery, very close to downtown or uptown Table Bluff. And over here we had basically the Protestant cemetery for anyone who wasn't Catholic who came to this cemetery. So Ray, why didn't you come on in, coming into the cemetery? Before meeting up with Barry at the next grave, I wanted to tell you a little bit about this tombstone. I asked Jerry about it, and he told me this tombstone is an old redwood plank, and they used to carve the name of the deceased with their date of birth and their date of death. Jerry told me that when he first started coming here about 30 years ago, about half of these graves had these old redwood tombstones. They've all sort of fallen away over time, and this, as far as I can see, is the only one left. And Jerry said this one could easily be over 100 years old. Okay, let's go meet up with Barry at the next gravesite. Hey Ray, 
Hey, good to see you again. Hey, Barry. Ah, oh, the Perrot family, I see. So this stone, it's, it's actually got a lot of, of other names on it, of uh, members of the Perrot family buried here beneath our feet. But this is the only one with an epitaph. And, and what an epitaph. Let me, let me read you the whole thing, can I? Yes. In memory of Luella Perrot, born June the 19th, 1871, died June 24th, 1891. So she was five days beyond her 20th birthday. Oh, she was so young. And listen to this. A soul by nature pitched too high, by fortune pitched too low. Uh, she was found with a pistol shot to her heart in uh, a shed behind the farmhouse, just a mile from here. And at first it was ruled a suicide, but she'd been having an affair with a native Indian guy and he was charged with, with murder. He was held in Eureka for three months. They had seven trials. On the final trial, he was acquitted. That, that, that took all three, three months going through endless one trial after another because they were having hung juries every time. My heart goes out to Luella, 20 years old. Barry, here's the gravesite of Luella's older sister, Laura. I read all about Laura in your book, The Humbug 2, and what an inspirational story that is. Let's talk about Laura, if you wouldn't mind. This is the gravestone for Laura Perrot Mahan. She was four years older than Luella, and she was the founder and president of the Humboldt County Women Save the Redwood League. Really, she led the whole effort to save what we now know as Pounders Grove. Oh, which a beautiful is, stretch. And uh, without her, I'm not sure that we could have been walking through Founders Grove now. If you go to Founders Grove, today you walk through the trails yes, uh -huh. you will eventually stumble upon the Mahan plaque which is dedicated to Laura and to James Mahan. She was the one who really spearheaded that whole effort to save that stretch of the Redwoods. So that's the story of the Perrot family and hey Jerry before you, you go okay. I think we should talk a little bit about the demise of the town itself which was obviously starting yeah. Yeah. with the tunnel it's 250 yeah. feet below our feet yeah. that was completed in 1884. Yeah because that meant that the railroad could take over hauling all the cargo that had to go over the top of Table Bluff and, and so pretty quickly the town started uh, diminishing in importance and in 1898, so we're talking about 14 years later, the Humboldt Times had a little bit to say about how the town had already started to kind of shrivel up. And I'd like to read just a little bit about what they said. So they said, the completion of the Valley Railroad told heavily to the detriment of the little highland town which looked down on the bay to the north and Eel River Valley and the coast range of mountains to the south the old stage barn in which the relay stock was cared for looks deserted and somber in its loneliness. Where two stores once flourished, there are none. Mm -hmm. And by 1914, they had a strip of concrete coming up and going over the top of the hill so autos could travel on it. Redwood so, Highway. Redwood Highway. And a couple of years later in 1917, once again, the Humboldt Times writes a kind of elegy for Table Bluff. And they said this time, the scouts, the trail makers, the miners, all have crossed the Great Divide. Never again will the tinkle of chime bells and grind of brake irons herald the coming of the freight caravan. Thank you.
150 feet is Table Bluff Cemetery. Great, you guys nailed it. You really hammed that up, didn't you? Redwood warehouses down there, big mm -hmm. buildings okay, where they can store stuff. Okay, you're going We're sticking okay. with the Table Bluff. Okay. We want to know okay. what on Table Bluff. Well, okay, I want to know. This is what happens when you have a historian yeah, along. Okay. 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 So we're, let's get back to Table Bluff. Okay. This was. In the old days, and I'm talking well, about what? the 18... I'm sorry, you should be telling me this. You say, Ray, let me elaborate on what Jerry... You guys are telling me this. Not, you're not telling Jerry. I already know it. Yeah. It's the miners all have crossed the Great Divide. The Great Divide. The Great Divide. I thought that was the Rockies, but hey. Well, uh, we're on a divide right here on top of Table Bluff. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> More fun watching, watching Ray in action. <laughs> I'm ready for my close-up, Mr. DeMille. <laughs>